This is what you've been talking about, the sophistication of what your industry faces, what the public sector faces. What are the biggest threats out there to you and, and, and what have you found in the, in the first four months of this year? Well, we talk a lot about nation state threats, which are certainly uh, prevalent and will always be prevalent. One of the things that uh, we actually did a keynote on, myself and Mike Santonis, was on e-crime. And we took a representative case study of some e-crime groups and really talked about the sophistication level. Um, while it's sophisticated, it's actually relatively easy to get into many organizations. You can just buy access. And then a big focus for the e-crime groups now is actually not even encrypting the end user's data, but to actually steal it first and then extort the company uh, to make sure that they get paid before they, they leak the data on the what website. What is the rationale of the threat actor? I think that there's this idea, if you take ransomware as an example, yeah. that that activity is just indiscriminate. Uh, they just want money, so they go after whoever. They want, well, they want money and they go after where the money's at, right? They go after the bigger companies, they go after source code, they go after uh, companies that they know could pay from a public embarrassment perspective. But you're right, there's a bit of indiscriminate access that if they have it, they're gonna try it, whether it's a hospital, whether it's a large co company, whether it's a, a government organization, they wanna get paid from everyone. We just talked to the NSA about trying to hire talent in the public sector in this, in this country. You post strong earnings, strong top line growth. How seriously does corporate America take the threat in, in, digital threats, cyber threats. Well, Are you just waking up to this now or, or do you see sort of consistency? I think it's consistent and it's it's been consistent over the last probably five years from a boardroom perspective. I think it's moved from an annoyance of having a PC that's infected to potentially systemic risk to a business when the entire business is ransomed and, and uh, their systems are rendered useless. So it is the number one, in my opinion, threat that is talked about in the boardroom today. Do you remember in January when we were at CES, there were thousands of people there, not that many of them were saying generative AI. Right. Now everyone here is saying generative AI. What does that mean to you? Are you using generative AI tools to improve CrowdStrike's offering? Do you use it personally? I mean, how does it impact your industry? Well, I, I'm, this is one of those fascinating technologies and I think it's a bit of an iPhone moment for many folks when they actually use it and, and, uh, and get the results out. When you think about generative AI and how it can be used in security, it can really help in automation. There's a lot of repetitive tasks for a security operations center administrator, things of that nature. And I think that will help revolutionize that. And we're, we've been pioneering AI since I started the company in 2011. So it isn't a new buzzword to us, uh, as opposed to a lot of companies. But I think what's important when we think about generative AI is, I think it's gonna compress the, the time frame that companies have to actually patch because the ability to create exploits and take advantage of these vulnerabilities that exist and you know, patch Tuesday, Microsoft has, et cetera, it's gonna compress that time down to a very small level. There's a debate in, in the field of um, whether generative AI makes tackling phishing uh, more difficult or if it helps to reskill the workforce you've already got to literally improve defense. Where's your headline with that? Is this an upskiller or is it a sort of displacement of human activity? For me, there's always going to be humans in the loop and you kind of look at level one, two and three. If, if you can automate a lot of the level one repetitive tasks and you can basically make level two analysts or level three analysts more productive, A, you're going to hire less of them, B, they're hard to actually find and keep and they're expensive. So why not automate the repetitive right. tasks? At the state actor level, where are you seeing more activity? China or Russia? China's pretty active, pretty active now, particularly when you look at what's happening with Taiwan. They have a long plan. They're Has that patient. ramped up as geopolitical tensions We've, we've seen it ramped up. up, yeah, with geopolitical tensions. And how does it manifest itself? Uh, particularly in the technology industry. It, you know, obviously there's a lot of chips in Taiwan, so there's a lot of understanding of what's happening. There's a lot of reconnaissance. There is a lot of just understanding. Yes. Even, even shipping lanes, you know, who's shipping what, all of these facets of information are of interest to the Chinese government. And they, they suck it all in. It's like big data exercise for them. They suck it all in and they build a puzzle and they're very patient.